Welcome to Lab Report number 15. Uh, I am BCAP. I am recording this from home. We've had a surge in coronavirus cases here near Seattle, so we are trying to stay out of the lab as much as possible unless we need to do experiments. If this is your first time joining us, we put out these monthly videos with updates about the science that happens behind the scenes with Folded. First up, news. We had a few software updates come out in November. First, the big one. Big shout out to Dev Josh, who put in a ton of legwork to get this out. Foldit is now in dark mode by default, so the background will be black. We have lots of new small options and tweaks so you can customize your Foldit play experience. The Rama map can now be linked to a hotkey. The icon for the mutate button is changed. There are new chat features. There's tons more. Check out the blog post for a complete list of all the changes in this release. We've had another release to try and get out a new objective. This is the contact surface objective, which will replace the SASA and shape complementarity objectives that you're already familiar with. This new contact surface objective is faster and also correlates better with experimental success. So we really think this contact surface objective will help you design better binders in our binder design puzzles. Lastly, in 2021, we will be ending support for GUI and Lua version one recipes all recipes will need to be converted into Lua version two. So if you have recipes in your cookbook that are GUI recipes or version one recipes, you will need to convert them if you want to keep using them in Foldit puzzles. If you want help converting recipes, please reach out to us in the Foldit Discord channel, or you can email us at mail.fold.it at gmail.com. Next, in puzzle updates, in November we had basically two types of puzzles that we're gonna double down on. The first is the MERS spike binder puzzles. As we mentioned in the last lab report, MERS is a respiratory disease very much like COVID-19 and is also caused by a related coronavirus. Just like the COVID-19 coronavirus, MERS virus uses a spike protein to break into human cells. Some of our research collaborators here at the University of Washington are interested in testing possible treatments for different coronaviruses, including MERS. So in November, we launched a handful of new MERS spike binder design puzzles so that you can design proteins that would bind to the MERS spike and prevent infection. In our second puzzle update, we have a new kind of protein design challenge. This is a linker design puzzle. In a linker design puzzle, we start with two separate proteins that we want to link into one long protein. But we need both of these proteins, both of the starting proteins, to be in a very specific orientation. So that means that the linker that joins them needs to be rigid and needs to preserve the orientation of these two binder domains. In the November puzzles, we've been challenging you to design a linker between two coronavirus spike binders. A single protein which has two binders connected by a rigid linker is essentially one big protein with two binder sites for the coronavirus spike. We think that a protein like this would have a much tighter binding affinity for the coronavirus spike and would be an even more effective therapeutic or diagnostic tool for coronavirus. Foldit team member Neil PG wrote up an entire blog post about the linker design puzzles, so you should check that out for more details. In this month's design of the month, we have a linker design from Jumper2, Mike Lewis, and Enzyme all collaborated on this design from puzzle 1912B. Um, and what I like about this design right off the bat is that this linker region makes lots of contacts with both sides, both of these binder domains that we're trying to link. Um, we do see that part of this linker design, it does seem to make some contacts with the coronavirus spike target. Um, that's okay, but really we're not that interested in making new binding interactions with the target here. We are only interested in how this huge protein will fold up in the absence of the spike. Um, in the absence of the spike, we want to make sure that this protein folds up exactly as designed with the two binder domains in the correct orientation and distance. And this is important so that when this protein does encounter coronavirus spike, uh, these two binder domains are already positioned correctly to bind two binding sites on the spike. And this will give it very, very tight binding affinity. So if we pull the 
entire design away from the spike target, uh, we can see that there is good contacts between both binder domains and the linker region. I am a little bit worried on this side that there are not very many hydrophobics that are buried between the linker and this binder domain on the left. Um, and what we, should, what we should think about here is, um, is how this protein will fold when we put it in the test tube. So we can imagine if we put this protein in a test tube, um, if uh, we can imagine what might happen if this whole binder domain on the left swung outward. And so we'll just, uh, we'll just move one of, these, um, one of these linker residues to show how this might happen is um, if this protein were to try and fold up in this way, um, this seems like it's, it might actually be kind of stable. There's not, there are only a couple of exposed hydrophobic orange residues that are exposed to solvent if this protein were to misfold. Ideally, we'd like to have a very strong core of orange hydrophobic residues that are buried between the linker and this binder domain so that if this protein were to try and misfold, we would have a lot of unfavorable exposed hydrophobic residues. So again, we just want to maximize the amount of contacts between our linker and the binder domain on both sides. And that will ensure that the entire protein folds up into a rigid single chain with both of the binders in the correct orientation for binding. So in summary, this is a brilliant design from these three folded players. Uh, we will continue to run more of these linker design puzzles and we encourage you to keep trying to design linkers that form a large core, not only within the linker, but also a core that expands to the binder domains on both sides. That's all we have for this month. In December, you can look forward to office hours from JFlat06. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, we'll see you next time.